Hello and welcome. I'm Jerry Revis, senior pastor at Unity Temple Church of God in Christ. The Lord gave me a word for you. It's found in Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call on me and I will answer. Take a look. I don't know what I would do without the Lord. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without the Lord. Oh, yeah. around and sing how he blessed you and you and did not forget about poor me I don't know what I'll do without the Lord yeah keep your hand in God's unchanging hand, you better keep your head. In God's unchanging hand, I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what i do. I don't know. Without the Lord. Nisi Williams and Maestro Charles Beecham. Beautiful job this morning. Thank you so thank much. You. And thank you and welcome to Unity Temple Church of God in Christ. I'm Jerry Revy, senior pastor here. And we're doing something a little different today. We're actually preaching a sermon in an empty sanctuary. The governor still has an order on about stay at home. And so churches are still allowed to have church. We're considered an essential service. But the governor is asking all churches to limit the number of people at their gatherings to 10. So we decided to suspend our regular Sunday morning service here at the sanctuary and come to you on live stream today. But this is not going to stop us from giving God the praise, the honor, and the glory today because he's worthy to be praised on this beautiful, sunny last Sunday in March. In the midst of all that's happening here, God is still a good God. Before I get into the message, I want to ask you to do something for me later today. I want you to call around to your friends and your family and your relatives, folks that you haven't spoken to. See how they're doing in this crisis because this is a very isolating experience yeah. as we all are seeing right now. And humans are social creatures. We, we love to interact with each other. And although we can't really do a lot of congregating, you can get on the phone and call somebody and say, hey, how you doing? What are you up to? Just call to let you know I'm thinking about you. Yeah. I spent a lot of time on the phone last night calling around some of my relatives, some out of town. And it was just so nice to have that conversation because you know something? From coast to coast and really around the world, we are all in the same boat together yeah. today. Yeah. We're all having to isolate ourselves and, and stay at home. So say I love you. Let them know that you care about them. That's what Jesus would do. It's just good to stay in touch. Don't put it off today. Call somebody. As you know, there's a plague loose in the land. It's called the coronavirus, COVID-19. It's a mysterious, deadly strain of influenza for which there is no vaccine just yet. Yeah. Scientists around the world are working night and day feverishly to find 
a vaccine for this. Yeah. Until they do, or should I say, until God gives them the solution, yeah. we're stuck with having to shelter in place. Mm -hmm. But God is still going to get the glory yeah. out of all of this. He's yeah. going to get it. But the Bible says we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. So something good is going to come out of all of this. For one thing, this isolation is going to give us a greater appreciation for the church. If you love church, you love being in the church. You love the fellowship of it. You love the praise. You love the songs. You love the atmosphere and the experience of worshiping the Lord in a church. There is nothing like it. So when this is lifted, I want you to go to your choice of church, your church of choice. You can come by and visit us, too, if you don't have a church. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This situation is making the church more dear to us, more important to us. There is a comfort and a rest and a peace that you can't get anywhere else but inside a church. It represents the presence of the Lord. The Bible says his name is in this house. There's nothing we can do about the state of the world today, nothing. God is in control here. I am the Lord thy God and there is none else. That's a scripture, just Google, you'll find it. He is God all by himself and he is running things on the earth. He'll lift this coronavirus when he's good and ready, yeah. when he is good and ready. And in the meantime, we should be seeking his face as never before until he does. Yeah. If you have your Bible handy there or your cell phone, I want you to turn to Jeremiah 33 and 3. It's the book of the Old Testament, Jeremiah 33 and 3. And it says this, call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Lord, we thank you for your word today and we thank you for this opportunity to stand and declare the whole counsel of God. Look on us today, word our mouth, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord as it came to the prophet Jeremiah while he was in prison. It's interesting that instead of breaking Jeremiah out of the jailhouse, God decided to speak to him while he was in a prison cell. God was showing Jeremiah that even though he was behind bars, his presence was still with him. Yeah. And so it is with you and me today. The coronavirus has us all cooped up in our homes and only making little raids into the community to go to the grocery store or to the gas station or, or to find necessities at the drugstore. But it can't keep us from the presence of the Lord. No stay-at-home order can keep God away from us. The word says, draw nigh unto the Lord and he will draw nigh unto you. In fact, the greater the affliction the greater the consolation. Our trouble will never be greater than God's power to comfort us. Some of David's most inspirational psalms were written while his enemies were hot on his trail. One of them is Psalms 27 and 2, where he wrote, When the wicked and even mine enemies and my foes come upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Call upon me, God is saying to Jeremiah in this scripture, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Great and mighty things, wondrous things, incredible things, things that will be hard for you to understand, Jeremiah. This is hard for us to understand out here, this coronavirus. You're locked up in prison, Jeremiah, but God is telling him to look beyond your circumstances. I want you to look beyond this current situation. 
Call unto me, says the Lord, and I will answer you. You might be starting out another week without a paycheck. You can't work right now. The company has shut the whole place down. The rent is due. The cupboard's still a little bare now. But God is saying, call on me and I will answer. And when you call on him, don't stop calling on him. There's a scripture to back up what I'm saying here. It's found in the book of Isaiah. It's the 62nd chapter. It's the 6th and 7th verse. And it reads this. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And give him no rest till he establish. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The word is saying don't be quiet when you call upon the Lord. And don't stop calling on him. Don't stop praying. Don't give him any rest, says this scripture, from your prayer until he establishes, until he brings a change in your situation, until he lifts the hardship here, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Translated, that means until he makes you a testimony. In other words, he'll show you how good he is, how great he is, how powerful he is. Give him no rest from your prayers until you start seeing a change of things in your life. Give him no rest until he puts you back on your feet. Give him no rest until he lifts you out of debt. Give him no rest until he pulls that sickness out of your body and out of your house. Call unto me, says the Lord, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Be encouraged today. You're going to come out of this better than the way you went into it. You're going to come out better than the way you went into it. Yes, you got laid off maybe. Yes, you just opened a new business a few weeks ago. Yes. You just retired on your 401k has been cut in half. Yes, all that is true. I don't know how God is going to end this pandemic. I don't know when God is going to end the COVID-19. All I know is what David knew. I once was young, but now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. You've seen trouble before in your life, but didn't God bring you out? You've been short of money before, but didn't God put some money back in your pocket? As stressful as these times are, God has not forsaken us. You're going to come out on the other side of this better than when you went in. If your job never comes back, The Lord has another job lined up for you already. Doors may shut, but new doors will open. God is a very present help in a time of trouble. He sees you. He knows you. He knows where you live. He knows how to deliver you. And he knows when to deliver you. And just like Job said, in the midst of all of that suffering, when he is tried, I shall come forth as pure gold. When I am tried, I shall come forth as pure gold. You're going to come out of this better. You're going to come out of this stronger. You're going to come out of this healthier. This is not the end of you. This is not the hill you're going to die on. But peradventure, even if you lose your life in this, you still win. Because God's people, God's people, when they die, they go straight into his presence. My Bible says absent in the body, but present with the Lord. Jesus said, he that believeth on me shall never die. I said, never die. You'll just transition from this life to being in the presence of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. You'll close your eyes down here, but you'll open them in heaven. In our text today, the Lord says, call on me 
and I will answer. Beloved, you're going to make it, you're going to survive, and you're going to strive. You're going to thrive, and you're going to survive. You're going to come out of this all right if you don't faint. Now, you can't faint on this. You can't faint. God said, call unto me, and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you today for allowing us to see another Sunday. Thank you for how you allowed us to open up our eyes today with a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, you're the God of the universe. All power is in your hand. And we know your eyes behold your people. You have never taken your eye off of us. In the midst of this virus, in the midst of this plague, you're still right here with us. You're a comfort. You're a help. You're a way made. You're a way out. And we thank you and appreciate you, oh God. Give us a mind to get our mind off of ourselves and onto you. Give us a mind to get our mind off of ourselves and onto somebody else. To call and add some strength to them. An encouraging word, oh God. You've blessed us to be a blessing. And we thank you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I want to thank you for tuning in today. We're going to be back here again next Sunday. The Lord says the same at 11 a.m. live streaming. It would be wonderful if you plan a financial season in this ministry, and you can do it very easily by logging on to Givelify. It's an app you can put on your phone. And once you put that on your phone, you can look for Unity Temple Church of God in Christ at 52 Reeb Avenue in Columbus, Ohio. Whatever you want to share with us in a financial way, it'll be much appreciated. Again, we thank you for joining us. We thank you for praying for us. We're praying for you. And we're going to leave you with another song by Maestro Charles Beecham and our songstress, Denise Nisi Williams. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. I found the answer when I learned to pray. With faith to guide me, I found my way. The sun is shining for me stay. I found the answer when I learned to pray. I found the answer. When I learn to pray, with faith to guide me, I found my way. The sun is shining. I found the answer. I found the answer. You can find the answer. We will find the answer. I found the answer when I learned to pray. Thanks for joining our live stream today. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back here next Sunday at 11 a.m. Please join us and have a great week.